left from your token. We are here on a mission to give space to little moments manifesting their own interiority. Estas no son palabras mías, son de Alberto Cruz. All these acts result in something unknown. Thus, each time we inhabit a new interiority, but not entailing starting from scratch. Por eso hemos querido traer unos elementos cuyo blanco sea dibujado. To start for us is a poetic word. We will take the figure of the four cardinal points. Que para nosotros tienen un significado poético, más allá de su cardinalidad. So let's see what this compass shows here at Hood Park so as the Mereida tell us our destiny by tamely awake. Um, so, hi everyone, both uh, in person and online, and welcome to today's lunchtime lecture as part of the Stories About Sustainability um, lecture series this autumn. Uh, just to tell you a bit about the series, it invites architects from around the world to look back um, to the materiality and craft of the past and see how it can inform more sustainable building practices now and in the future. Um, I'm Mani Javergi, so I'm the Head of Public Engagement at the AA and ahead of today's lecture that is being broadcast live from the AA's Forest Campus in Dorset, Hook Park. I'm delighted to introduce Emmanuel and Kate, who are co-directors of the AA Design and Make program that is based at Hook, and will chair today's conversation and introduce the other speakers around the table with them. Um, before I hand over to them, just a few logistics, uh, because it's a hybrid format. Um, the conversation will take up the next 45 minutes or so, and then we'll open it up to the audience, both in person at Hook and online for a wider discussion. But throughout, please feel free to post your questions in the chat <coughs> at any point, and we can either ask it on your behalf or um, else just use the raise hand function and we can unmute it to ask it yourself. Um, but yeah, at any point, just like post it in the chat. And then also if you're in the room, just raise your hand and you can also ask the question as well. Um, so without any further ado, I'll hand over to Kate and Emmanuel at Hook to tell us more about today's conversation. Thank you so much, Manajay. Welcome everyone. Um, we are so honored and pleased to have a visit of another tribe. We describe design and make quite often as a tribe. We, we are residents in, in um, the beautiful woodland forest here in, in Hook Park. And today we are honored by the visiting of another tribe from far away from the other side of the world, from South America. Although we might not very often speak the same language, um, we have the same matter at hand. We like to produce things and we make things and explore the world of architecture and all different kinds of medium. So again, we're so excited to have you here um, and to you to engage in a conversation. Um, we just started this fantastic performance that you guys, that you guys uh, prepared. Um, it's not necessarily something that we do, but it's really a fantastic way to open the conversation. Um, and for us, it is so rich to have, in a sense, a first act in the library, a building that we haven't really opened yet. You spoke about interiority um, as a core aspect of architecture. And, and what a beautiful performance to do as a building that we still describe as a building site to kind of have this first act, this first performance to end. So thank you so much for that. Um, and maybe we should start, go around the table and just very briefly introduce who's, who's joining the conversation. So my name is Emmanuel, co-director together with Kate Davis of Design and Make. Um, yo soy profesor de diseño de la Escuela de Arquitectura, Marcelo Araya, y, y tengo a cargo un taller de, de diseño de tercer, tercer grado aproximadamente. So, uh, Marcelo es el profesor de diseño en la Escuela de Paraíso, y um, Silvia, si uh, puedes también introducirte. Yeah. Sí, soy Silvia Arriagada. Mm -hmm. Soy graphic designer 
han, eh, hago talleres de editoriales, me ha tocado eh, llevar adelante muchos eh, textos fundamentales de la escuela, poderlos publicar, y con mis alumnos realizamos lo que ustedes vieron arriba, este inicio que estaba dibujado en, los te en las telas, fue dibujado con ellos especialmente para traerlo acá. So, uh, Silvia uh, directs a course of graphic design back in Valparaíso, and uh, the canvases we, we were drawing uh, at the library were designed by the students in Valparaíso, especially to be brought to this occasion as a way of interacting uh, in between our students. Well, hello, everyone, and thank you for uh, having us. Uh, my name is Francisco Adriasola. I'm a very proud uh, former student of the Design and Make um, course. Um, Emmanuel uh, was my, my uh, teacher. Uh, together we designed uh, the Wake for Core Library and the Darkroom uh, in a very, very special uh, year of uh, Hook Park, uh, 2018. And um, today I'm here as a curator, um, bringing the drawings of Alberto Cruz, uh, co-founder of Open City, and in an exhibition that you can all see at Bedford Square, um, and uh, that we just opened uh, last week. Um, so we are here today to speak of similarities and differences on the approach of uh, teaching in places like Open City and uh, Hook Park. Thank you. I wonder if, as an introduction to Open City for people maybe who haven't, don't know what it is, don't know how, how you work, don't know what's the kind of founding principle, it'd be really great just to hear you kind of introduce Open City and a little bit about its history and the kind of core fundamental kind of way that we work. Yeah. Uh, well, Open City uh, started in the 70s, 1970. But um, it was founded uh, after 20 years of search by uh, Alberto Cruz and a group of teachers, uh, architects, uh, philosophers, <laughs> and, um, and poets that wanted to uh, give a turn to the architectural experience. They saw being an architect as a, as a community, uh, as a communal act. Um, they didn't believe really on, on teaching inside a classroom. So they were always searching to this relationship in between alumnos and the city, alumnos on the, on the site uh, and the materials. And they thought no one should aim to have their projects kind of entitled for themselves. So they wanted to have uh, these projects done in between uh, several students. Um, and without uh, hierarchy, you know, uh, like uh, no one would be more important than the other one. Um, everyone would be working, would be studying, um, and um, and they will be living together. And then um, it turned to, the it or turned to, to be um, a whole experience in a way. Uh, for them. And this came to be at uh, Open City, finally, uh, after these uh, 20 years of research. Um, and we, at the exhibition in London, uh, probably you saw it, we, we have in one of the walls the Declaration of 1970, uh, 1967, which is a very strong declaration of, of how they saw Alberto Cruz and the partners, uh, the weakness of universities. Um, and they really revert uh, to kind of their, their position. And uh, so Open City, in a way, became like a rebellious uh, place. A little bit like your book park, Emmanuel. Sería interesante decir también que 
en la ciudad abierta, se encuentra cerca de la ciudad donde los alumnos realizan sus observaciones, que es Valparaíso, y que es una ciudad que desde una costa hacia arriba es autoconstruida. Entonces hay mucha yes. observación de los alumnos en ese lugar. Yo diría que son tres las instancias que encuentro similar a esto que estamos presenciando acá, que es la travesía, Valparaíso y la ciudad abierta. Yeah. So uh, what Marcelo wanted to add is um, that Open City is nearby Valparaíso, and uh, Valparaíso, from a certain height uh, uh, of the city, uh, is self-constructed. Uh, people that will, will live on, on those areas of the city itself. So uh, the school, they send a lot of the uh, alumnos to witness, to kind of uh, take notes and to draw on how those uh, experience of uh, people self-constructing their own places uh, would kind of, uh, in a way, would take. And uh, so you also add that... Um, The similarities you see with this place is uh, kind of the the the, 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 the self construction, the journeys, uh, travesías, mm -hmm. and um, the third point was the Valparaíso y la ciudad abierta. Yeah, and the Valparaíso and the open city. Porque en esos lugares es donde de alguna manera eh, se trabaja con la eh, ver de real magnitud, digamos, y se tiene una experiencia directa con el material. Yeah, so in those places, uh, they have a real experience with the material, uh, which is something that I think it's a, it's a very important thing also here in Kukpa. I, I think obviously the thing that we have in common is that we are both our satellite campus. We are remote from the main school. Yes. And maybe that journey, kind of out with this is really quite important. It's kind of maybe create a sort of freedom, you know, of, of, of um, kind of actions and yes. things that are more possible because of the context of where we go. Hay una cierta distancia entre la entre lo, entre Ciudad Abierta, por ejemplo, siendo como un satélite de, de la escuela principal. Y eso da ciertas libertades para como una autonomía de alguna manera y como para un, a un, una distancia y ese viaje entre un lugar y otro como que permite ese traspaso de, de, de información o de experiencia entre y que se cambió entre una experiencia o sea, ese viaje perma, permanente sí era como situar un poco en la perspectiva histórica de la ciudad abierta. Thomas is going to sit, locate like the historical situation of uh, Open City. Mm -hmm. eh, en sus comienzos está este grupo que va desde, lo, desde la Universidad de Santiago a Valparaíso en el año 1952. And its beginning is uh, formed by this group of, uh, of the Ar architects that comes from Santiago to Valparaíso. In, in 1957. In a search of uh, studying architecture um, based on the um, basic acts of, of common life. Por eso que la primera enseñanza que se les entregó a los alumnos en ese momento fue salir a la ciudad a dibujar sin un proyecto previo. That's why uh, the first thing that the, the students were uh, asked to do uh, is to go out to the city and draw uh, the simple acts of uh, human behavior without a project. And then, eso, eh, eh, esa manera de estudiar la arquitectura conllevó a que se fuera, a, fuera realizada en conjunto. Porque se salía en conjunto a la ciudad. And then that way of, um, of developing these uh, architectural kind of uh, drawings um, uh, tend to be a communal, uh, a community act because they would go as a community to the city to explore. 
eso. Seguido a continuación de eso, vino un segundo paso significativo que fue plantearse una pregunta por América, por América del Sur en concreto. There is a, a second uh, foundational act that uh, was to do with the question about America itself. And it became um, a question about the South of America. De manera porque nosotros los americanos habíamos estado o mirándolo desde un punto de vista europeo como que venía desde Europa o desde un punto de vista indigenista o eh, eh, localista, pero no con una mirada propia de un continente que había sido en parte encontrado y en parte había ahí también alguien vivía, habían otras culturas viviendo previamente. Because for them, the views of, Amer of the America itself uh, and what they were questioning was that uh, there was a view from the North that were kind of the colonization, the Europeans, and there was a view from the indigenous side that were the people that were living in America. But then there, there wasn't a, a proper kind of personal view Uh, of them because they felt they were kind of in in the middle of the, these uh, uh, views. Entonces, la manera de responder a esa pregunta, así como se había salido a la, a la ciudad a estudiar arquitectura directamente observando en la ciudad lo que ocurría, se salió a recorrer América en un viaje que se llamó Travesía But para responder a esta pregunta. And to This second question to be answered, uh, they developed what it was the, the journeys, uh, the, the journeys through America. And um, so they would do all these <laughs> travels around America, searching for that answer. And una vez terminado ese viaje de Mereida para interrogar lo que el continente decía, se vuelve y se decide fundar la ciudad vieja. And once they, they, re they return from this trip uh, with some answers, they return to Chile and they decided to found uh, Open City. Que es un terreno de 300 hectáreas con 7 kilómetros y medio de costa, ¿no? Sí. Con 7 kilómetros de, de costa enfrentando al Océano Pacífico que nosotros llamamos nuestro mar desconocido. And the open city is located in a seven kilometer uh, front of the sea, the Pacific Ocean. So 300 hectare um, lot is uh, based on the sand dunes and it's facing the Pacific Ocean that they internally call their um, unknown sea. That's it. And, eh, eh, y la arquitectura que se realiza ahí es una arquitectura hecha en conjunto entre profesores, alumnos y también participan otras disciplinas desde su comienzo como matemáticos, filósofos, poetas, escultores, pintores, etc. And the uh, architecture that's done at the Open City is a communal experience done in between uh, professors, teachers, uh, alumnus, uh, painters, poets, um, <coughs> mathematics, mathematics, physicians. Yeah. physicians. Porque hay una visión de que todos los oficios son iguales en su dignidad. Because there is a vision that uh, any kind of work is similar in its own value. That's it. That's a brief story. Uh, this is uh, what Thomas Brown, who is a former student of Open City and Valparaiso School. And also a member of the... And, uh, yes, and also a member of the Amerida Cooperative. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you so much for, for sketching kind of the, the framework. That's, that's very, um, very insightful. I was wondering, I had the 
pleasure to visit the Open City in 2014. Yeah. Um, and I was I was absolutely taken away by 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 the site. And obviously Hook Park is informed by the forest. <clears throat> the forest is uh, is the material that we work with. It's uh um it's our design studio, it's our library, it's our material resource. I was just wondering if you could maybe expand a little bit about the importance of the site. Um, I was told when I visited that I, would, I can't remember exactly the name of the building, but I was told that you have to, to build the buildings elevated because the sand will push. So you, I love the title, the, the, the Sea of Unknown. Mm -hmm. Like so, so the site is continuously in flux and you yeah. want to position these moments of architectural inhabitation. And I was just kind of wondering if you could expand a little bit on the importance of the site. Emmanuel visitó Ciudad Beta en el 2014 y lo que le impresiona, así como lo que tienen acá, que es el bosque, lo que informa en la arquitectura que se sucede en Hook Park, él quiere, o sea, quiere preguntar cómo el, el lugar informa lo que allá sucede, en lo que se construye. Por ejemplo, eh, cuando él lo visitó, eh, le decían que las construcciones tenían que ser en altura porque en el fondo la arena avanza y en el fondo si no, las casas quedan enterradas, digamos. O sea, de alguna manera como que el, el, el lugar informa la arquitectura y el desarrollo. Si pueden expandir un poco en eso y... Yo voy a hablar desde la experiencia del, 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 ¿cómo se diría? de la poesía. Hagámoslo con párrafo corto. Sí. She's going to talk about, uh, she's going to respond uh, through the poetic uh, kind of side. Eh, que siempre la palabra poética está presente en cada una de las acciones. Always poetry is uh, present in every action they do. Luego, a tu pregunta, eh, hay que hacer un paso hacia atrás para decir por qué se está ahí. To answer your question, uh, we need to go a step back uh, and think why we were there. Y hay una respuesta. No, hay una, un camino, una orientación que nos dice la poesía, un poeta, que es eh, un verso. There's a, a way that a poet uh, told us um, through poetry of how to be there. <clears throat> y dice que a lo que nosotros nos vino permanezca como viniendo. No sé si And he said, uh, what came to us shall remain the way it was. Por tanto, eh, la pregunta tuya, cómo recibimos ese espacio, es siempre, eh, ¿cómo se diría? Renovada, no es fija. Renovándose. Renovándose. So, so to answer your question properly, uh, she, she would, uh, we would say uh, it's always a, a renewing process. Sí, yo creo que respecto de la, del paisaje, del lugar, eh, la arena que a propósito de lo que él dice, la arena es esencial, uh -huh. porque <coughs> eh, una gran cantidad de espacio de la ciudad abierta está cubierta por las dunas. Entonces, más allá de levantarse para, para que la arena pase por abajo, es, eh, yo creo que es considerar esa, esa mutación constante de lo que se construye. Um, so all, all together with the sand, that is properly what you said, at the, uh, because the, the uh, kind of 70% of the area is covered with sand. Um, so uh, they will be kind of considering uh, multi-factors. 
I would say uh, to add word for what uh, Marcelo is saying that there's a uh, humedal. Um, okay. or, or ¿Cuál sería la otra zona, la otra cosa sí, que tiene? Sí, hay una uh -huh. zona de dunas y otra zona de cerro también uh -huh. humedal. Claro, pero la gran parte de la verdad es sobre la arena. Claro. So it's the, this, there's the mountains, the, the sea, and the sand to always keep um, in consideration uh, for everything that they, they, they build. I'm going to put an example. How the, the, the place informed the, 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 the architecture also. Uh, in Chile, we have an earthquake, a very, very hard square earthquake. Uh, and the sun with the earthquake, earthquake, uh, se comportan, se behaves, se behaves like a water. So when we are designing a, a building, an ancient building that is not now the, in here, in, it's not now in, in here, what they say, it's not, build, it's not there anymore. It's, it's not there anymore. The foundation of the building is a study about the, how to. Uh, uh, found a, a, a building in a place it's like it's like a water. Mm -hmm. So we study a, a big bags of uh, of plain with uh, with the sand or painted with sand in the interior that they, they are into introduce as they are introduced <coughs> in, into the sand also. Mm -hmm. And so the building moves like it like like <coughs> Like it is, it is, it is floating in the sand, mm -hmm. and all the junction, all the junction of the building is uh, with the. They are uh, amarras, uh, uh, tight, tight. Uh, entire, because the 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 the, the amarre, was the, the tie, the tie mm -hmm. permits the flexibility that it needs. Mm -hmm. and, yes. and this building is not there anymore. It's not there anymore. Because, no wonder. No wonder. <laughs> but that, what, what a beautiful image of this, the building as a vessel yes. that floats in the sea of sand. Yes. You know, that's, that's so powerful. Yeah. But that's the idea. And we built another another building in the hill, not in the sand, that we call the the. the Palace of the uh, 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 dawn, dawn and dusk. Uh, the dawn and dusk that is built in brick. Mm -hmm. And um, always the brick in, in, in Chile with, for the earthquake is treated with, with a cement, with a con concrete. 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 <laughs> concrete. But we try to build a, build, uh, a building without concrete, right? but uh, in the way that the brick works. So we study a form that is a little car, it's a, with a little car with a, a structural engineer. And they say that we that we have to make the the the, 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 pegamento, the, the, the concrete the concrete for to to put the, the to, to see or to, to join the, the bridge by grid. Well, no, I'm going to tell it in Spanish because I try to explain it, uh, exactly what I want to say. And that's important. Uh, uh, no, que se pensó que, que tenía que tener que la puntura tenía que ser igualmente blanda que el ladrillo. Okay, so for doing this structure, they they thought um, the concrete that would glue um the bricks <laughs> together should be as bland as the con uh, as the, the, as the, 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 the brick, brick. brick itself mm -hmm. yes and the foundation of that of those walls were also <laughs> uh, permitted that the the this wall should mm -hmm. move uh, with the with, with the earthquake the and don't mm -hmm. touch it be between them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could 
That is the exhibition. I have to go back. Oh, maybe let's run it and and we will mention it when it comes. Hmm? No. Well, these are these images are good uh, because you wanted to mention something about uh, life in open city. No, no, lo que quería hablar, claro, de la vida, de la vida que es muy distinta acá. Allá todos los miércoles se reúnen 500 alumnos. Uh, life, life there seems uh, different uh, than here. For instance, uh, on Wednesday, uh, every Wednesday, 500 students join in uh, Open City. <laughs> eh, sí, ellos hacen distintos deportes. And they do sports. Y tienen un taller en que están todos reunidos con uno de los arquitectos, uno de los diseñadores y un poeta, siempre, para una clase que se le da a los 500. And they do uh, one class for the 500 with one architect, one poet, and um, one uh, philosopher uh, could be... Or designer. Or designer. <laughs> y conjuntamente con eso están las familias que caminan ahí mientras está la clase. And together with the que students, uh, there are the families that live there in open city. <laughs> and they are kind of always kind of polarizing around it. Y también están los que trabajan, que son cinco. And there's also the staff that have only five people. Y también estamos todos los profesores que nos reunimos a almorzar. And there's also the teachers that they come to have lunch every Wednesday. Entonces, eh, y están los animales domésticos. And the um, cats and dogs. <laughs> eh, en, se da una, una vida en que el, el alumno, el estudiante, ve las hospederías, nos ve a nosotros reunidos, eh, y ellos hacen un deporte en común, distintos, en un mismo espacio, creado para ellos. Uh, so the students will do sport in a space created for them. Y eh, ese espacio se hizo para ellos, así como se hace el espacio para un concierto, para un acto poético, para una danza, para un ¿qué más podemos celebración. celebración donde van todos nuestros exalumnos alrededor de mil and they also build uh, the space for different activities such as a concert such as a celebration or, or seminars or sí. yeah different ones o para reunir la celebración que together, the celebration that they, they are having now, uh, you refer to the 70 years mm. of the Open City, of the School of Valparaiso. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the palace of the ah, Don and Dusk. Yeah. Don and Dusk. <laughs> the, 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 the walls of bricks mm -hmm. without concrete, with a frame of mm -hmm. bricks. Mm -hmm. But it's the typical way to construct in Chile. When you, you, you use uh, uh, bricks, you have to put a frame mm -hmm. of concrete. And the frame is the, the word. The other is like uh, to put uh, a, a panel. Mm -hmm. It's not the material. It's not the material. Mm -hmm. So I guess in that, you know, it's interesting to think about. I mean, I was fine the the landscape here um, humbles you as an architect a little bit. So the, the, the landscape is constantly reminding us of change. Um, for you, the, you know, you have a, a landscape which is essentially a shift in city yes. um, of sand. Um, I can't remember where I read it, but I read once that um, in Sahara, in Sahara, when the, the sand dunes come and overtake a village, they say um, you should knock the roof out. 
of your house so that the sand will you can fill it. And then when the sand dune is passed, you can then rebuild the roof of your house. If you don't like the roof of your house, it will, it will flatten the whole building. So you allow the sand dune to kind of come through, take over the village and then move on. I mean, for us, the, the forest is constantly trying to reclaim our wooden buildings, right? Yeah. Yeah. For, it, for, for the forest, our wooden buildings are dead wood. Yes. Um, so it's a similar kind of conversation about how it reminds you of that to take part in the continuum, to take part in a constant floods. And I wonder if it's the, is it, do you think the, the main driver for the, for the poetry of operating is the landscape? Or is it, is it the poetry of living that you described earlier about the kind of small acts of living and living both together? I'll make it. I'll, I'll make your permission. I will make uh, yeah, to, to uh, bits of some of it. Um, lo que pregunta Kate es que el cuando que ella observa que el 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 entorno en este caso el bosque está siempre como reclamando de vuelta los edificios que ellos construyen. Porque para el bosque, claro, para el bosque esto es madera muerta, digamos. Y la temperatura, el ambiente, qué sé yo, está corroyendo permanentemente, haciendo que esto destruya. Si pasaran los años, esto se acabaría, digamos, desaparecería. Eh, por ejemplo, en el Sahara, la, la, las tormentas de, de, de arena, eh, la, los habitantes del Sahara tienen que sacar los techos para que, eh, en el fondo, pase la tormenta y después reconstruir, digamos. Entonces... Así como en el fondo hay como una idea de construir en cada lugar, eh, para usted la poética es muy importante en ese lugar. Y esa poética viene solamente del acto eh, humano o también viene del de lugar en sí mismo. Esa es la pregunta de fondo. Si es que la poética de alguna manera, eh, como lo que tú planteabas en un principio, viene del lugar, ese acto que hace luego de, de pararse ahí y leer el lugar, o... El fondo de la poética es desde, desde el acto de la persona y del acto humano, o, o desde ambas, quizá. No sé, yo por la experiencia que me ha tocado vivir, diría que es desde ambas. Porque el, el caso ahí que estaba del, ¿cómo se llama? Del palacio, donde está el palacio, ¿cierto? Palacio, esta, el palacio... Eh, estaba visto para, estaba construido, iba a ser construido para que habitara una familia. So the palace was going to be constructed for a family to live in. But, pero, a group of families. Claro, yeah. but, es, but, pero no, 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 no fue así, ¿ah? porque en un momento eh, se vio que era un lugar magnífico y se probaron las voces. Me tocó probar mi voz ahí, ¿ah? hasta dónde llegaba y dónde se escuchaba eh, en un acto poético. Y posterior a eso, o antes de eso, ya no recuerdo, eh, se dice que quede tal cual, no se, no se va a evitar. So, on, on this, a little bit to answer your question that uh, came, didn't came shorter. Um, so, uh, yes, the place also informs uh, the poetry. As the, as does the the act, uh, for instance, in the case of the palace, which it was meant to do kind of a, a group of houses in the beginning, at some point they saw that they this was already a good place and a beautiful place, and they went there and they tried their voices, uh, they spoke out loud, and they decided that it was finished. And so it was kept like that, and nothing else was done. So uh, I'm going to complete the story about <laughs> uh, uh, Sorry, I'm not invited to this talk, but, but I'm going to talk. <laughs> uh, the history says that the poet, in that case, or fellow Yobi, arrives to, to see the, the, the works and say mm. he's full plenty and this is the this is finished there are nothing more to do what we are going to do with the houses that we seek in, the, in that interior make it outside like a faubourg and we start building 
those elements in, in, in concrete, in, in concrete mm -hmm. that we call the Faubourg, where are the basement of the, of the houses that were going to be built there. And then after a time, we, we, we saw again that it's finished, that it, we couldn't do their houses. There were, mm -hmm. we, have, we, we, we have to do the houses in another place, which is the reason. Because in the beginning, when the, 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 in the, the opening of the, in the acts of the opening of the open city, uh, looking the, the way, yes, the, the, traces. the traces of the foot in the sun, uh, we, we think that the, they showed us something. And we call that the incessant not to know what, not to know about the sun again. The incessant not to know about the sun again, and that's moved all the construction mm -hmm. of us mm -hmm. uh, because they are always opening to another to another destination. Mm -hmm. um, and the why they say open it to another destination because the architecture, <clears throat> the, the architecture, which is the, the uh, 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 it's it's an encounter between. A building and a life, they they inform at the same time and then they have the same value uh, uh, which is produced. So this uh, in this building could ha could happen this because we have a, a, a distance between us and 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 we are here and, and we are here as and in an in, in interior and. Could be that it's not necessary that it's covered with another, and it's no need to be covered with another peel inside or something. It's, it's completely, mm -hmm. uh, it's yeah. completely with the use. And in that case, it was completely with the, the poetical act that says, see, that happened. And then the poet said, it's finished. And then, and after the, that, we are going to build a, a forward for, for the house. And when we finished the, found, the foundation of that building, that was made in concrete, we saw that it is finished also. That's a history. Masico, que hay un bueno. Yo no soy arquitecto, pero me ha tocado participar en muchos actos poéticos que dan origen a las obras de Ciudad Abierta. Y Respecto de lo que estamos hablando, hay uno que es muy decidor de, lo, de esto, de la poesía, digamos, y del lugar, de cómo ellos se van vinculando unos con otros. Y, y es una franja, una franja en ciudad abierta donde se deja de escuchar el mar, ¿cierto? Porque el mar es constante, el sonido del mar es constante en, cierta, en cierto tramo de la ciudad abierta. Pero en otro, eh, ya no se escucha. Y se escuchan los sonidos de los pájaros. Entonces, eh, eso, por ejemplo, fue... Eh, me acuerdo que fue determinado en un acto poético justamente porque el acto poético, de alguna manera, eh, es como si construyera la obra antes de ser construida. Por lo menos es habitada. ¿Entiendes? Es habitada por las personas antes de que ella tenga paredes. Mm. Yes, the lugar fue determinado en ese acto poético. So there are certain determinations uh, that we could think that they are also architectural uh, that are determined by the poetry. So, for instance, um, the noises. Uh, at some point in in open city, there's a border, kind of an um, invisible border where you stop hearing the ocean and you start hearing the, uh, the mountains. Um, so that invisible place uh, is determined by poetry and not by construction. So the construction comes after the poetry. I wonder if, uh, just looking at the time, if we open it up to some questions, uh, there is a, yes. a comment, a question and a comment online. I just want to read it out and maybe provoke a response. Um, 
and also perhaps really interesting so that we can translate it. But um, it's from Anna uh, Valenzuela. Um, mm -hmm. From what I was able to listen, it seems that the open city is a place for reflection about the city. It's a question mark. Mm -hmm. um, so there's the observations brought back into a different distance reality from the urban context. And therefore that allows you to respond perhaps in a more pure manner. Um, but is it a, a con conscious exercise about understanding the construct of the city um, and then nature is, and the landscape is interweaved? So I, I suppose the conversation about what's the relationship then between open city and the, the idea of thinking about the city? Yeah. Or, or tra maybe transfer up. Are these bespoke? Are they site specific? Are they to be understood uh, at Valparaiso? Or is it something wider that you want to make a kind of connection with the city? Um, la, la, o sea, la pregunta que hacen eh, es básicamente si es que en la ciudad abierta, ¿cuál es la relación que tiene con Valparaíso? Si es, como, es un lugar para estudiar y entender Valparaíso desde, desde afuera. Eh, o si en el fondo la, 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 la relación es como un, un poco más casual, por así decir. Eh, como, ¿Y cuál es la relación y cómo, cómo eso ha ido como variando en el desarrollo de, de la ciudad abierta y la ciudad al mismo tiempo? Nosotros no tenemos ciudades medievales en América. Y... Muchas de ellas son eh, un plan cuadrado, ¿cierto? Eh, ortogonal. Eh, yo diría que Valparaíso es la única que en ese sentido rompe ese esquema, ¿cierto? Y se convierte en una ciudad, aparte, que está construida en los cerros, tridimensional, ¿cierto? Entonces, eh, creo que por eso se va a observar, digamos, porque, porque eh, digamos, multiplica las posibilidades de, de, de acto dentro de dentro de la ciudad. Y sí, la relación, creo yo, es directa, ¿cierto?, en, entre las construcciones de la... Bueno, esto es una opinión, digamos, desde, desde, desde mi ser diseñador, entre las construcciones de la ciudad abierta y las de Valparaíso. Uh -huh. Esto que hablábamos de, de que no... de que, de que todas, las, to, todas las casas so, tienen un cierto grado de, de flexibilidad en Valparaíso se usa un sistema también, digamos, que es flexible por los terremotos, ¿cierto? O sea, no, no, no tenemos piedra, no tenemos construcciones de piedra, porque todo es entramado de madera, eh, eh, relleno con barro, ¿cierto? Con un sistema de adobillo. Bueno, aunque no son iguales las casas de la ciudad abierta, ¿cierto? La hospedería de la ciudad abierta, yo creo que algo tienen de eso entre la autoconstrucción y la flexibilidad, digamos, que se les otorga. So the, 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 there is a relationship with the city, um, but it's not kind of forced in a way. Um, what Marcelo is saying is that um, um, we don't have medieval time cities in Latin America. They are very, very fairly recent. So everything is kind of more in a, in a constant evolution. And uh, as the city has evolved, also open city has evolved. And the uh, and they are getting closer and closer. It, you, open city used to be further away from Valparaiso, and now they are kind of almost there. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> they keep using Valparaiso as a as a, as a, a place of study mm -hmm. uh, on the kind of uh, self construction uh, ways that they have the the use of material. Valparaiso is is uh, a rather poor city, uh, especially on the on the uh, top of the um, heads of the mountains. Um, so you will see people building with the timber filled with um, with the, um, soil, and that's the same um, way they will build in open city. So it's something that is kind of evolving and uh, informing each other in a way. Yo veo la, la, la similitud en que en ambos casos este, son Ciudad Abierta y Valparaíso eh, son eh, eh, efímeras, o sea, es, 
Ciudad, Valparaíso eh, es construido efímeramente en las alturas y también Ciudad Abierta es efímera, no, no, no piensa en una fundación anclada, está posada, en Valparaíso también está todo posado en sus cerros. Both, both places are ephemeral in a way because they, of the way that they are inserted in the land. They, so there is a similarity in between uh, what Open City is and Valparaíso on, on the way they are anchored to the kind of the land. Mm. And I want to say, I, I add something to my friends. The richness of the richness the richness of Valparaiso is to look for the habitants of Valparaiso is to look the horizon of the the horizon of the sea because they live on the hills, and the richness of the habitants of the open city if you look the houses that were built there they practically don't have views to the ocean. They are the, our richness is the interior of the mm. uh, that the architecture contract. Mm. Uh, uh, There are very there there is a difference between Valparaíso and the sea, open city. Uh, there is a different richness mm -hmm. because we are looking in we are looking for another instant of the uh, of the of, of the life that is not a manilo, the idea. A desire. It's not a desire to the man who looks at the horizon. Look at desire. And the man who's looking to the horizon is looking, looking for desire. It's, it's, it's looking it's to desire. Like a desire. We are not looking at the, 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 the life like a desire. We are looking like an instant, like an act. Mm -hmm. It's a difference. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we've got any questions in the room. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Sorry for my English. That's very well. Right. You were like, a little nervous, and I tried to explain and to use the, the the right words, and it's very difficult. It's, right. it's very good. It's a lot better than our Spanish. <laughs> no, maybe I want to do it first in Spanish, and then I want to translate. Right. Yeah. Um, pregunta era cuando veo las edificaciones, hay casi un instante en que parecieran escultóricas. Vamos, hay una no sé si un abandono, pero de pronto la arquitectura pasa a otro instante como tal, como con, concebimos la arquitectura como elemento acabado con un uso, con una... Eh, mi pregunta es, ¿cómo, ¿cómo funciona eso? ¿Cómo se desligan? Digamos? Entiendo que es mediante un arte teórico, eh, pero decir, ¿cuál es la, como la razón detrás de eso? De entender la arquitectura de esta manera. Mm. I can do it in English. Right? <laughs> so I was asking them um, that when you are seeing those pictures, some of the buildings seems like sculptures, and it reminds me a little bit not of architecture yet, but of sculpture. So there's a dichotomy between the two, the two things, and I, I was un, un, trying to understand what's the reason behind it, why to choose this path, uh, but. Yeah, evolves into these forms. Yo creo que Tomás es el que debe contestar esa pregunta. You are invited here. <laughs> yeah. eh, mira, yo, hay, hay varias razones. Yo creo que una de ellas es como, como lo decían en, con anterioridad, está construido por, por muchos, por todos. Eh, y eso imprime seguramente distintas direcciones, podríamos decir, en la obra de arquitectura, ¿cierto? Eh, y, y creo que también el lugar nos permite, porque es un lugar que no... La, la, las obras de arquitectura, no sé si me equivoque, Tomás, pero no tienen planimetría, ¿no? Las obras de la... De la, de la no tienen planos. Ese, los planos se hacen después de que se hace la obra. Entonces eso es muy raro, digamos, no, no tienen permiso municipal. Eso permite, lo permite el lugar, porque está alejado, digamos, de la ciudad. 
Entonces, es una arquitectura que no es convencional, digamos, está regida por otros aspectos, por la luminosidad, por cómo entra la, cómo entra la, 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 la luz, el, el, el viento, eh, el sonido. Eso es lo, 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 lo que rige la obra de arquitectura. Por eso se ve como intrincado. I'll, I'll translate your answer. So, um, because of this, the places outside the city, uh, there is no kind of um, sectional plan or kind of a, 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 master a, a master plan or a rigorous kind of um, uh, planning permissions to be asked for construction. So, uh, many of these constructions, they don't have even plans. Uh, Uh, or 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 projects itself because it's an a, a communal kind of uh, way of building. Um, so they are, in a way, to answer your question, uh, there's different ways of approaching a project. Not all of the projects has to be kind of this kind of very kind of strict way of kind of doing uh, Uh, previous project and then kind of uh, following project and then kind of um, the builder would would kind of know uh, how to build and give a budget. This uh, starts the other way around. Kind of uh, you start with the material, you have something, you start building, then you leave it uh, for uh, some time to sit there. You try your voice. Um, so the way of building is absolutely different. From the way of building, so that's the way. That's why they look how they look because there's no planning for those constructions to be uh, what they they tend to be at the end, in a way. Um, and there's an idea, but there's not a kind of. Uh, a look. La razón de ser es simplemente el acto. Yeah. Y, y siempre hay reglas del juego. Eh, But there's always rules to the game. Sí, <laughs> claro. Y, y son reglas muy particulares, porque son poéticas. Entonces, eh, se dice sin fachadas. Yeah. No hay una fachada predominante, por eso te llama la atención como que sea escultórico, ¿no? Una escultura se rodea. ¿no? Nosotros vivíamos con un escultor, nos hizo clase un escultor, y decía, la escultura se, se rodea. ¿no? Entonces, eh, esto de que tú veas que aparecen como escultóricas, ¿no? es porque no hay un privilegio de una fachada o una entrada, sino que... Una jerarquía. No hay una jerarquía, so, es un rey. So one, one of, the, of these rules would be, there won't be any facades. Uh, so that's why you can't look at building from one side or the other, uh, because they are all sculptures. Uh, and one of their teachers was a sculptor. So he would say, for a sculpture, you, you can't have a side. You need to look at it always uh, uh, as, wow. a, as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another, another question, it's actually written in Spanish, I think, so if uh -huh. you read it and then you can yeah, question rather than make it friendly and you can let them go. It's written in English more. above. Oh, ah, okay. Above. Uh, could it, thank you. Could it be that as the checkboard orients and allows a, prior, a priori mental map, the medieval plot like Valparaiso, Disorients and creates drift to the body. Y dice luego, podrá ser que como el damero orienta y permite mapas mentales a priori, eh, la trama medieval como Valparaíso desorienta y, y crea deriva al cuerpo. Very sophisticated question. <laughs> yo, yo creo que... O sea, claro... Teóricamente el damero orienta, pero he conocido gente, de, por ejemplo, quien está acostumbrada a vivir más en una ciudad medieval, en que se pierde en el damero, porque todas las, todas las esquinas son iguales, entonces no, 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 no se desorienta. Entonces yo creo que 
no es que el damero oriente, sino que estamos acostumbrados a una forma de, de vida, digamos, que, que para otros, como las esquinas son distintas, lo puede reconocer. Eh, claro, yo creo que hay una... Nos obligamos siempre a desorientarnos en, en la ciudad abierta. Nos obligamos a ir por el camino no, no recto. Yeah. So the open city, they, they try not to be oriented. And because they feel that um, it's not necessarily true that this kind of orthogonal way of building the cities is the way to be oriented. Because uh, uh, as every corner might be the same, actually, some people would be disoriented because of the similarities from one corner <laughs> to the other. Uh, in difference to the medieval city that's integrated, you could recognize kind of special uh, places that will get you oriented. Um, so that's something that they prefer to follow. Mm -hmm. But there's also yeah. a real pleasure in getting lost, right? <laughs> Definitely. Absolutely. We've got any other questions in the room? Yeah, we've got one when when you refer to families is literally like the families of the students or it's also like in a poetic way to refer to the group of students so there's a question just because i don't think the mic picks up for people online um When you refer to families, are you referring to the families of the students usually, or is it more kind of poetic idea about families? Yeah. Eh, es de es de distintos modos. Hay familias con hijos. Hay estudiantes estudiantes también. Hay, pero cuando decimos familias, cuando yo dije familia, era para decir como esa parte más de hogar, doméstica, que podía existir. Que es distinta a cuando hay un visitante que también tiene su lugar, y cuando hay estudiantes que también tienen su lugar. Entonces son distintas modalidades de, de vivir ahí. Y respecto a, a lo anterior, yo creo que lo bonito de, de, de decir, eh, eh, que tal vez ayuda también al modo de vivir de... de de familia, de estudiantes, de visitantes, es eh, que no hay una huella, sino que se van creando huellas. Es como, si tú tienes que seguir un camino, te dirían, no siga el camino, arme su camino, ¿eh? en Ciudad Abierta. So, in the open city, uh, there, are not, there are no traces, to follow they will tell you follow your own trace and build your own trace uh and to answer the your question um she will be speaking about families in general like family as a sense of um um home place <coughs> in a way uh they could be families uh, with the children it could be families of the students uh they could be families living there or just Visiting, but uh, she's adding families um, because of the of the home kindness that they want to bring to the place. Okay, I have a question. So, because it's a community with a lot of families, so there's always different of opinions, and and every designer has. Uh, a very strong opinion or uh, they're coming from different places sometimes even though you're living like in one place so how do you sort things amongst yourself like because there's no hierarchy I that's a tough one yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything uh, that online is about um yeah lots of lots of different people coming from different places with no hierarchy how do you uh resolve conflict make decisions eh, básicamente como sin una jerarquía tan clara y con mucha gente y profesiones distintas cómo se resuelven finalmente algunos los conflictos o las problemáticas que se presentan porque muchas porque todo 
todo proyecto conlleva una problemática. ¿Cómo se resuelve? No? Ah, sí. Sí, buena, buena pregunta. Sí. Con poesía, con poesía. Muy bueno, poesía. Sí. bueno el, eh, hay varias. Una forma es que somos una corporación. ¿eh? O sea, nos reunimos, hay un presidente, hay un vicepresidente, hay una directiva ¿eh? que es para la parte administrativa. Okay, so there's a corporation with a president and a, and a kind of a board um, to resolve the administrative kind of issues. Pero además hay un sistema que tenemos nosotros que proviene desde los inicios, que es el Agora. And there's a system that uh, comes from the beginnings of the foundation of the Open City, that's the Agora. Que siempre es al aire libre. Which is always at the open site. Son las reglas del juego. Which is part of the rules of the game. Y, y en ella se habla libremente y se, y se consiente ante alguna dificultad o ante algún proyecto incluso. And there you can speak out loud whatever problem or whatever opinion you may have of anything. Esas serían como las dos maneras. Y las otras es, diles que es el almuerzo de los miércoles. And Comiendo over, y tomando vino se, se arregla over, todo. Over, over lunch. And if the conflict is, gets too far, there's wine. On that note, unless it's a burning question, um, talking of lunch, um, we also have communal lunch here and we need to go and eat and when it's cold um, and feed everybody. Um, just want to say thank you so much for offering some glimpses into the really fascinating construct that is Open City. You know, there's so many lessons to be learned from us. And, and it's a reminder that architecture is so much more than the material that it's building. So it, it's it's been really absolutely fantastic to, to talk to you. And I think this is the start of a conversation um, and that there'll be many more. Estoy muy agradecido de la conversación y de, de, lo, de los puntos en comunes que, ten, que tenemos, eh, que ellos tienen, ven que tienen mucho que a, a, a absorber y aprender de la experiencia. Y eh, gracias por contarles y abrirles un poco esta puerta a poder observar lo que ha sido el, el, el propio de, de la Escuela de Paraíso y de Ciudad Abierta. And in, on, on that note, I think this is a beautiful image uh, with the work of David Jolly and uh, Mark West, who is an external examiner here at Cook Park. Mm -hmm. Bueno. Mark West sí, eh, sí, viene, viene acá y hace... hace eh, so there we have... A, ¿No está ahora acá? No. Uh, he was recently here, apparently, two weeks ago. Hace dos semanas estuvo aquí. Ah, mira, sí. Estuvimos con él. Agradecer y, y, y dejar invitados a que visiten Ciudad Abierta. Estamos, los recibiríamos con los brazos abiertos. So thank you also to you and they hope you can come to Open City and they will be expecting you with open arms.